So my brothers and sisters, when we call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's important to know that you have a role to play as well. What do you want? You want to get married. So you make a dua, oh Allah, grant me a good spouse. But you have not bothered to look for anyone. You have not spoken to anyone. You have, for example, some of the sisters and some of their families believe that a female needs to just sit back and wait for a proposal to come in her direction when no one knows you exist, subhanallah. And people are just greeting you every day, not even knowing what has happened. Your father never went out to try to talk to people who have sons, for example, or to look out for lads and so on. Good people. It is the responsibility of Waliul Amr, the guardian, the one who is looking after you to get you married. It's the responsibility of the guardian. The guardian is considered a person who has failed if he did not actively look for a spouse for those females under his guardianship. So for us to just sit back and say, you know what, your prince, and I've heard the statement, your prince is already predestined. He will look for you and come to you by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know what? It might have been predestined that your prince would probably maybe only be in the akhirah. May Allah grant us goodness in the dunya as well as in the akhirah. But if we are sitting here and we'd like a spouse here, do something about it. Say the name of Allah, seek the help of Allah, but actively search for a, a spouse for those under your guardianship. It is a duty upon you. And this is what we fail to realize sometimes. I have had cases where people come and complain about things where the guardian keeps on telling them, make dua, don't worry, it will come, make dua, make dua. How can you continue saying do dua or make dua and continue supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the capacity has already been given to you by Allah? Allah has given you the capacity and you don't want to use it to try and achieve. For example, if you want to drive to this masjid, if you wanted to drive here, it is not enough for you to sit in your vehicle and say, Ya Allah, take me there. Ya Allah, take me there. Ya Allah, I beg you to take me there. Ya Allah, I'm giving a charity, take me there. I'm reading this surah, take me there. I've given so much, Ya Allah, take me there. I'm your worshiper, take me there. I want to worship you, make it easy for me to go there. You have to turn on the vehicle and you have to drive. As simple as that. But sometimes we do not realize that in life, we use the opposite of that when it comes to achieving other things. Why? This was common logical example of driving. Allah gave you the car. Allah gave you the energy. You have the driver's license. You know where the place is. How dare you just sit back and blame Allah for not having gone for Salatul Jumu'ah? No, you are answerable because you sat back and you did not utilize the energy. But if a person did not have energy, if a person was immobile, paralyzed, and they couldn't even move, and they made dua, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, let someone phone me, because if they could not phone, say they were paralyzed, may Allah protect us all, and grant cure to those who have paralysis. May Allah grant cure to all those who are sick and ill as well. So my brothers and sisters, if a person is totally paralyzed, they can then say, Ya Allah, send someone to pick me up, Ya Allah. That's fair enough because then when someone comes, it will be from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if nobody comes, the person is sinless. Why? Because they cannot achieve what they wanted to achieve. They had nil in terms of capacity. But the minute you have the capacity, you must use it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness.